Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho and welcome back to another episode of Every Effect in Adobe Premiere Pro Explained. Today we're taking a look at the color correction folder. This is very related to everything that you have in the Lumetri color panel. Like I said in many of these videos, there's more than one way to do anything. But jumping right into it, the first one is one that I hadn't been too familiar with previously, ASC CDL. And this actually stands for the American Society of Cinematographers Color Decision List. So it's a way a standard set aside way to figure out what color grading information you have between different equipments and softwares. This allows you to adjust the red, green, and blues in a combination of slope, offset, and power. So I'm going to say if you want to learn more about this one, start with the Wikipedia page on it. So that technical standard one aside, now we jump into the little bit more straightforward ones. Here we have brightness and contrast. As the title says, it allows you to affect brightness and contrast. Pretty self-explanatory. Again, I don't know how often I'd go this route if I have the whole Lumetri color panel in front of me. I suppose it does give you some flexibility with keyframes, create like a bright flashes. I can do that with keyframes. So I'm not going to keep saying that over and over. Like I said, different older versions of Premiere didn't have Lumetri color, different versions of After Effects, and certain effects are just going to be redundant, just the nature of the math behind these things. Next up, we have change color. This one's pretty cool. It allows us to change a specific color. So in this case, uh, let's say I have this, this bright orange fish. I can try to set it to orange, or I can actually use the eyedropper tool to click this point right here on the fish. And using this color, I can do a transformation on the hue. So I can make this fish green or blue or pink. Now you do have to adjust the tolerance and the softness because this peachy color, the fish is obviously different shades of orange, it has scales. So if you increase the tolerance a little bit, that might give you a better effect. And in this way, I've been able to change that color from the orange fish to kind of purple fish. Next up, we have change to color. So this one is kind of similar. We can change one color to another. So I can change all the reds in this to blue. And just like the previous one, you, you have options to adjust the tolerance, which is kind of like the mask of that so that you don't get such a harsh look and you can try to make it a little bit more blended in. You could maybe use a mask. So if I didn't want all that background, I could just mask out this drink area and apply a decent bit of feathering on that mask. And in this case, we've changed the drink from like a strawberry honey drink to a blueberry raspberry drink. And you can also imagine that you could keyframe these changes gradually so that you have some sort of color changing effect happening over a keyframe. Next up, we have the channel mixer. This allows us to mix the levels of the red, green, and blue channels. So in each channel, we can put some more green, blue, red in it. Just another way using the red, green, and blue color theory to mix and create different color grading or color corrections. Again, I'm not sure if this is my first choice that I'd go to if I wanted to color grade or color correct, but if you know the math behind what you're trying to do, it does allow you to target specific color channels and influence red, green, or blue in those individual color channels. Next up, we have color balance. Again, red, green, and blue amounts. This time it's split up in a way that might make a little bit more sense intuitively. You can influence the shadows, midtones, and highlights of the image. So let's say I want to add more blue into the shadows. I can increase the shadow blue amount and you can see that take place. And let's say I want to add some more yellow into the highlights, then I can actually take out some blue out of the highlights. So color balance is one that you might be familiar with from Photoshop. Going along with color balance, you have color balance, but in this case, a hue, lightness, and saturation version of that. This is a really simple way if you're looking for a hue slider. It has the full 360 degree wheel, so you can create hue sliding effects over the entire image. You can keyframe them if you want or need, and you can increase the lightness and saturation along with that if you need. Next up, we have equalize. This is kind of just a drag and drop type of effect. It's familiar to the one in Photoshop. It tries to equal out the balance of brightness around the image and pixels. I'm going to open up the Lumetri scopes in this case, just to give you an idea of what's going on. If I was to turn the equalize off, you see it's a lot more wavy, but as soon as you put equalize on, it tries to redistribute and balance the brightness. It can be interesting to play around with in certain clips. Um, 
I don't know if you'd always want to go with this. It doesn't give you too much of a manual touch. But you can adjust the strength of equalization. And this does bring up the fact that you do have the Lumetri scopes available to you under your window, Lumetri scopes. And in these, you can right click and add different type of scopes. And this just shows you information about what's actually going on in your image. So you have the histogram. This is like the shadows and the highlights. You can see this peak of highlights because of all these bright points in the image. So you can truly see what's going on in your image, not just what you see on your monitor. Next up, we have the leave color effect. This is kind of like the color changing effects. However, this allows us to desaturate everything but a color. So in this case, we have red. And if I increase the amount to decolor percentage, you should see everything start to desaturate except this red. Now that's too bright of a red, so everything got desaturated. But if I increase the tolerance a bit, you'll see some of the reds in the image come back. So this can be a cool way to do a pop of color. Next up, we have Lumetri Color, which you can also find in the Lumetri Color panel now. But this brings all these effects that are in that panel and allows us to adjust them in the Effects Control panel. Pretty much the same effects that you have here. I would say if you want to go over every single effect here, check out my two videos, How to Color Correct and How to Color Grade. I go over all these panels more individually, but it's your basic stuff like exposure, contrast, etc. Next up, we have tint. This is a really fun effect, actually. It allows us to just map the image from black to white. So by default, it's black and white, but you can make it any two colors you want. So I can make all the blacks or shadows red, and I can make all the highlights or whites like a blue or navy color. In this way, we create a cool gradients map effect, like you might be familiar with in Photoshop, but for our videos. And you can also adjust the strength of the tint. So here it's at 100%. But if I lower it down to like 50 or even a smaller amount, then it can start to be getting used to tint the color, more like a color grading effect. So this can be a pretty cool creative effect. And remember, you can stack up all these, keyframe them, mask them. So lastly, we have video limiter. This is going to be more for if you're working with broadcasting video uh, and you have to meet certain specifications of broadcasting guidelines and displays and things like that. It allows you to clip the colors, add some compression, and you might probably not use too much unless you're in a specific industry of broadcasting. So those are the effects in the color correction panel. And in the next video of this series, we're gonna be going over a really fun one. That's the distort panel. And a lot of these coming up are gonna be a little bit more fun than the ones that we've started with so far. So I'll see you in the next one for distort video effects. You can find all the videos of this Every Effect Explained series in a playlist on my channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.